Northern pike are beastly fish, opportunistic carnivores who are known as some of the most voracious predators in Iowa waters. Researchers are discovering how northern pike live, grow, and navigate throughout their habitat in the upper two-thirds of our state. We join DNR staff via hovercraft, tracking northern pike along the frozen upper Mississippi River. It may be winter, but the ice-covered backwaters and side channels of the upper Mississippi River won't stop fish researchers with the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. In fact, it's very important that they collect information during the winter in addition to other seasons throughout the year. Winter has some challenges. Um, things are good right now while everything's iced up. As different periods of winter, as we start to soften up and stuff, it can be a little more challenging when we have open water and ice. Researchers use a hovercraft to get around the channels. This research is part of a four-year study of northern pike. The DNR is looking at population numbers, growth, and other characteristics of the pike. But they're particularly interested in studying habitat use and the seasonal movements of these predatory fish. So we really like to know where these fish overwinter. Um, we also see spring movements to spawn. Researchers caught northern pike from two different pools in the upper Mississippi, near Guttenberg and Bellevue. They surgically implant these radio telemetry transmitters into the bellies of the fish. The antenna hangs out the bottom. The northern pike has to be at least three pounds so the fish will behave naturally with the transmitter inside. So this is the radio telemetry receiver and antenna that we use on the ice to find the fish. The northern pike are very sensitive to noise on the ice. Footsteps can scare them away. What you can hear now is a fish that we've located. Um, like we said earlier, the fish are pretty spooky. So we triangulate the position. Um, knowing that if we get too close, that fish is going to take off. Because we, we want to collect the data where the fish was, not where we chased it to. Each fish has an individual radio number. And this receiver right now is set to scroll through each of those numbers every four seconds until we hear a fish ping. Then we'll lock onto that individual fish's number and locate the fish. Researchers don't need to actually catch the fish. We'll collect a bunch of data on it, um, say a GPS location, depth, dissolved oxygen, um, what the substrate is like, and the presence of vegetation or other structure that that fish might be relating to. I'm going to look at the water clarity using this secchi disc, lowering it down until I can, can no longer see the white any longer. Some of the research is already proving interesting. We kind of went in with the notion that these, these cold water inputs are really important to pike populations. We know they're popular fishing spots. The anglers really pile into those areas because in the summer when the water gets warm, it seems like the pikes really pile into there. But what we really found is they're not that important to the pike population as a whole. They use different habitat at different times of year. Um, for a lot of fish out here on the upper Mississippi River, uh, winter habitat's critical. Um, they need to get out of the flow and, and these backwaters that are deep and have good oxygen. Some of those habitat areas are becoming overgrown or are filling in with sediment. Research like this can help inform state and federal officials about what, if anything, they need to do in response. A big portion of that is, is habitat rehabilitation and enhancement um, projects that we do on the river where we go in and dredge out backwaters or build islands, um, do drawdowns. Um, a whole suite of things that we can do to, to change and affect the habitat here on the river. And we can use the information that, that we've learned from this project to, to make those projects better. Northern pike are popular sport fish. Pike populations are strong, and the Iowa DNR hopes research like this will help maintain that. <laughs>